The Genpei War was a watershed moment in Japanese history, marking the end of Japan's long period of classical antiquity, the Heian period, and thrusting the country into a new medieval era characterized by a growing takeover of governmental authority by the warrior stratum of society. This war was primarily fought between Japan's two most elite samurai families, the Kammuheishi and the Seiwa Genji, or as many people are probably more used to hearing them called, the Taira and the Minamoto. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you are probably quite well versed in the lore of these two families by now, as we have already examined their rise to prominence in our main chronological history series, as well as looked at the tumultuous events of the Genpei War itself in the deep dive video that I posted a few months ago. Today, however, I am very excited to be revisiting the events of this legendary conflict with a very special guest. The man, the myth, the legend himself, the Shogunate. The Shogunate probably needs no introduction to most fans of the YouTube history sphere, as his is one of the pioneering channels in Japanese history content on this platform. But just in case you've somehow made it to my channel without ever seeing his, he makes entertaining, in-depth content on Japanese history and history-related movies and games, with a focus on Japan's late medieval era of chaos and warfare, the Sengoku period. For this collaboration, we decided we wanted to have a bit of fun with the topic of the Genpei War, so we chose six of its most important historical figures and set about assigning them ratings in six different categories, almost in the way you might see in a video game character selection screen. The video will be broken into two parts, with Minamoto no Yoshinaka, Minamoto no Yoshitsune, and Minamoto no Yoritomo being covered in this video here on my channel, and Taira no Kiyomori, Taira no Munemori, and the retired Emperor Go Shirakawa being covered over on his channel, so make sure you check out both videos for the full picture. The six categories we've chosen to evaluate our historical contestants on are ambition, political ability, leadership, popularity, foresight, and luck. Our scores are informed assessments based on research and prior knowledge, but they are at the end of the day our own personal conclusions, so I hope you guys will feel free to add to the discussion by posting your thoughts and ratings down in the comments below. Anyway, with all that said, let's jump into our first historical figure, Minamoto no Yoshinaka, aka Kiso Yoshinaka. Minamoto no Yoshinaka was by far one of the boldest and most ambitious members of his family. Having accepted Prince Mochihito's call to war against the Taira, he would be confronted with the fact that he was obviously not the only member of the Minamoto family to return to action following their previous time in exile after the Heiji Rebellion. Yet once he had emerged, he would quickly discover that his powerful cousin, Minamoto no Yoritomo, had too arisen from the Kanto region and was marching westward against the Taira as well. Being regarded in the lower position of the two, Yoshinaka was made to be subordinate to Yoritomo and to also send his son to Yoritomo's power base of Kamakura as a political hostage. This did not sit well with Yoshinaka, who felt disgraced by the arrangement. Thus, he set out to make himself appear as the true main Minamoto leader. His tremendous victory against the Taira at Kurikara in 1183 was the momentous moment that paved his way to the capital, which he would reach and claim before Yoritomo ever had a chance. With Yoshinaka in Kyoto and having driven out the Taira, he was at first regarded as a hero, yet soon enough, his reputation began to deteriorate. Yoshinaka was not made of the same civilized cloth found in the capital, and thus his strong-arming of the emperor, the court, and the city itself in efforts to bring about a new stability and grow his own power were met with much scrutiny, and soon he would even find himself at odds with his own cousin Yoritomo. In 1184, Yoshinaka named himself the new Shogun, and even aspired to create a new military government for himself in the north. Yet, it would not ultimately save him, as Yoritomo's forces would eventually descend upon the capital, and Yoshinaka would be killed while trying to flee. Due to his wild nature and fierce rise to power, it is only natural that a figure such as Yoshinaka should receive a full 5 out of 5 in terms of his ambition.
As far as Minamoto relatives go, Yoshinaka was quite close to the family's main line and reasonably could have expected to grow up in close proximity to Kyoto's aristocratic world had his father not been killed during a family feud while he was still a baby. His father's death in this conflict, however, resulted in Yoshinaka being spirited off east to Shinano province, where he received the rustic upbringing of a country samurai, far removed from the complicated politics of court society. A twist of fate which prepared him well for the battlefields of the Genpei War, but left him at a serious disadvantage in his eventual dealings with the retired emperor and aristocracy. Yoshinaka actually showed decent political ability when it came to dealing with other warriors, as exemplified by his managing to avoid direct conflict with his cousin Yoritomo, while the two of them were fortifying their respective power bases in the war's early phases. When it came to interacting with people outside of his social class, however, Yoshinaka was an absolute novice, a fact that was made very apparent after he completed his brilliant counterattack against the Taira in northwestern Honshu and drove them out of Kyoto in 1183. Despite entering the capital as a war hero and man of the hour, Yoshinaka quickly managed to turn most of aristocratic society against him thanks to his ignorance of the proper way to engage with his social superiors. As mentioned in the previous section, Yoshinaka ultimately resorted to attempting to strong-arm the Kyoto elite into falling in line with him, setting off a chain of events which ultimately left him outnumbered and friendless in a city of enemies and gave the much more politically savvy Yoritomo the perfect chance to easily eliminate him in 1184. It was Yoshinaka who had defeated the Taira Grand Army, Yoshinaka who had expelled them from Kyoto and Yoshinaka who had been the first Minamoto general to enter the capital and restore the retired emperor to power. And yet somehow within the span of half a year he had squandered it all and gotten himself killed. If it weren't for his early diplomatic successes with Yoritomo out east, he would receive a resounding one for political ability. But taking those small victories into account, I feel he deserves a still very weak two out of five. Yoshinaka was without a doubt a competent commander, and this can be viewed very easily through his massive success against the Taira at the Battle of Kurikara in 1183. It was here at Kurikara where a very outnumbered Yoshinaka would still manage to pull off a momentous victory against the Taira by using surprise and chaos to catch his enemies off guard and create a mass rout. This was to be one of the major defining moments of the entire war, as the devastating Taira defeat would turn the tide in favor of the Minamoto. And as I had mentioned earlier, this victory also paved Yoshinaka's way to seizing Kyoto from the Taira as well. By this point, all the cards were in Yoshinaka's hands to usurp the mantle of Minamoto leadership away from his cousin Yoritomo, and lead the Minamoto to their full victory against the Taira and the cementing of himself as the new Shogun. Definitely a lasting legacy for himself if he could manage to pull it all off. Unfortunately, as we know, he could not. His rough country behavior set him at odds in the imperial capital, and he managed to not only sour all of his relations with the emperor and the court, but also burn many of his bridges. This meant he was never going to be able to achieve any ultimate ambition in the end. So while, militarily, we can see he definitely had the wherewithal to lead and win, outside of the realm of warfare, he had little skill to see his dreams brought to fruition. Because of this, I believe a fair score of 3 out of 5 is in order for his ranking in terms of overall leadership. During the early days of the Genpei War, it is hardly a stretch to say that Yoshinaka was a very popular guy. When he raised the flag of rebellion against the Taira in 1180, it is said that the warriors of Shinano province flocked to his banner in droves, and when he advanced into his late father's former stomping grounds of Kozuke province a short time later, he was also greeted enthusiastically by the local warriors there. As he racked up victory after victory against Taira-aligned forces, his reputation spread far and wide, and before long he had come to rival his cousin Yoritomo to the east in both power and popularity. While the cold and calculating Yoritomo had elected to remain out in the Kanto region after defeating the Taira at the Battle of the Fuji River in 1180, when Yoshinaka was put in a similar position in 1183 after his great victory at the Battle of the Kurikara Pass, he threw caution to the wind and rode his momentum to a triumphant entry into the capital. 
it can probably be said that this was the moment when Yoshinaka's popularity reached an all-time peak, and the tale of the Heike even claims that by this point his army had swelled to about 100,000 warriors. Probably an exaggeration, but still a good indicator of just how celebrated of a commander he had become. Bringing this massive army to Kyoto, however, was probably not a particularly good idea, as the city was not exactly a self-sufficient breadbasket and it was still reeling from a great famine in 1181. In order to feed themselves, Yoshinaka's troops ran amuck in the city, greatly tarnishing his reputation, and Yoshinaka then compounded this loss of face with his poor diplomatic dealings with the aristocracy. He then followed this up with an embarrassing loss to the Taira at the Battle of Mizushima and a violent and heavy-handed coup d'etat against the retired emperor, and by the time that Yoritomo sent troops to Kyoto to drive Yoshinaka out of the city in early 1184, Yoshinaka's army is said to have shrunk to a measly 1,000 men. We can thus probably say that Yoshinaka's popularity in his pre-Kyoto days was a solid 5 out of 5 but by the end of his life it had dwindled down to around a 1, so I'm inclined to want to average those two numbers out for a final score of 3 out of 5. Now we come to Foresight. Minamoto no Yoshinaka was in a very unique position when it came to the actions and betrayals he would make throughout the course of the Genpei War. He had boundless ambition and the proper bold tenacity to at least try to see his goals met, regardless of if he was successful. And this is where the question lies. Were Yoshinaka's dreams ever fully obtainable? And did he actually realize his reality? For the most part, it does not appear so. Yoshinaka's ambition and determination were met with compelling leadership and a fair bit of luck that would see him succeed at important moments such as that at Kurikara. And although from that point he had definitely a lot of power to say in which ways his path would take him, he fumbled the ball and would never reach his destination. In the end, he managed to make enemies of obviously not only the Taira, but inevitably the Emperor and the rest of the Minamoto family as well. All while trying to succeed at a dream of ultimate power that he had squandered with his own stubborn and brash behavior. And this is where we can see that he lacked the genuine foresight to understand that path that laid before him after his success at Kurikara. He failed to anticipate the actions he would have to take, the way he would need to conduct himself, and the overall proper course to place himself at the height of power within not only his family, but ultimately Japan. That is not to say there is not an explanation for this, as Minamoto no Yoshinaka was a country samurai who was entering into a more complicated world he likely did not understand himself. And there was bound to be a plethora of nuances that he would never fully come to grasp. But his failure to adapt should without a doubt be seen as one of the largest shortcomings and roadblocks that never allowed him to see the proper way ahead. For this, I give him a 2 out of 5 in terms of his foresight. There aren't too many moments in Kiso Yoshinaka's career that loudly scream either lucky or unlucky, but looking out across his entire life, I think it's safe to say that he leaned toward the unlucky side. First, there's the fact that the odds were a bit stacked against him from a young age. By the time he was a baby, his father had already lost the power struggle within the Minamoto clan to determine which branch of the family would be viewed as its most exalted main line. This meant that when Yoshinaka and Yoritomo both raised troops to fight the Taira in the Genpei War, Yoshinaka was forced to take a slightly submissive stance toward his cousin, and he also struggled to get the imperial court's aristocrats to take him seriously. Had Yoshinaka and Yoritomo's bloodlines been switched, Yoshinaka might not have encountered the same level of friction with the aristocracy that eventually led to his downfall, although some of that friction still has to be blamed on the actions of Yoshinaka himself. Beyond this, Yoshinaka strikes me as a man who, for better or worse, largely forged his own destiny free of the vicissitudes of fortune. But one more incident that falls in the unlucky category does come to mind, that being Yoshinaka's death. After being driven out of Kyoto by Yoritomo's army, Yoshinaka and a few close retainers had made it to the shore of Lake Biwa, where it was eventually decided that Yoshinaka's childhood friend, Imai Kanehira, would hold off the pursuing Kamakura troops, while Yoshinaka found a place to peacefully and honorably end his own life. 
However, as Yoshinaka searched for a spot to do this, he accidentally got his horse stuck in a muddy rice paddy, and when he looked over his shoulder to see how Kanehira was faring, he was struck in the face and killed by an enemy arrow. For a great general of the noble Minamoto family, it was a highly embarrassing way to die. And for this and the other aforementioned reason, I am awarding Yoshinaka a 2 out of 5 in the luck category. Alright, with all of the evaluation categories covered for Yoshinaka, this is how he ended up looking overall. Now, let's move on to our next historical figure, Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Minamoto no Yoshitsune has got to be by far one of the greatest and most tragic heroes of the Genpei War, if not all of Japanese history. His valiant leadership, tremendous skill as a warrior, and the many accolades he would mount over his fantastic career are all a testament to the legend that he was. But while we get into his actual role as a leader in just a bit, right now we need to answer the extremely significant question of, was he truly ambitious? And if so, in what fashion? Ambition is something that relates heavily to the story of Yoshitsune, being that it was the very fear of the ambition he may have that led his brother, Shogun Minamoto no Yoritomo, to order the death of Yoshitsune in sheer paranoia that the great Yoshitsune may covet the power Yoritomo possessed and would wish to steal it away. In retrospect, it has become very clear that Yoshitsune appeared to have little to no desire to succeed his brother at all. Any hint of treachery in his heart was indeed just a false claim. In the end, Yoshitsune's ambition never extended beyond that of being a loyal member of his family, a proud warrior, and an enduring commander. And for that reason, I believe he should receive a 3 out of 5 for his actual ambition. Yoshitsune's political ability is rather difficult to rate considering that he is the only person we are examining who was never in charge of any of the main factions involved in the Genpei War and its lead up and aftermath. Yoshitsune spent basically his entire career as the subordinate of his older brother, Minamoto no Yoritomo, and really only got to exercise his own unique leadership skills on the battlefield. Yoritomo did also entrust him with serving as his personal representative in Kyoto after the defeat of Minamoto no Yoshinaka, but in this case Yoshitsune mostly just dealt with kind of mundane administrative matters such as handling complaints of brigandry and the illegal requisition of foodstuffs from local landholders. Taking a bird's eye view of the politically tinted decisions Yoshitsune made throughout his career, particularly in regard to his relationships with Yoritomo and Goshirakawa, it is hard to find areas to really praise or criticize. The most I can say is that he was perhaps guilty of being just a bit too straightforward in an environment full of Machiavellian intrigue. He also damaged his relationship with Yoritomo by accepting court titles from the retired emperor, but who can blame him? When you grew up as the orphaned bastard son of a disgraced traitor and suddenly the de facto ruler of the country is heaping honors upon you, it's a bit hard to just gracefully bow out of the situation. Likewise, one could criticize Yoshitsune's lack of cool-headedness for letting Yoritomo's poor treatment of him after the war's end drive him to outright rebellion, but the man would have had to have been a near saint to still be exploring non-violent solutions at that point. We must also remember that Yoshitsune was in his early to mid-twenties for most of the major events of the Genpei War, so we never really got to see what sort of a political figure he might have matured into given a few more decades on the political scene. Ultimately, Yoshitsune was not a politician, but none of the political actions he took strike me as particularly unreasonable or foolish either, and so I think it's fair to rate his political ability as a basic 3 out of 5. Today, Minamoto no Yoshitsune is remembered for being the main figure who led the Minamoto family to their spectacular victory over the Taira clan in the Genpei War, winning terrific victories in such clashes as the Battle of Ichinotani, Yashima, and of course, Dan no Ura, as well as leading the force to defeat the treacherous Minamoto no Yoshinaka. In many cases, it was Yoshitsune's ingenuity and charismatic leadership that paved the way to his great success on the battlefield. 
Through this, we can see that Yoshitsune was the sword with which Minamoto no Yoritomo would cut the Taira to pieces, winning the war for the Minamoto family. But this great prowess during the time of war would inevitably lead to his great downfall, as his military success would in time cause rising suspicion from Yoritomo, which as we know would later lead to Yoshitsune's death. On a more personal note, there is also something to be said about his close relationship to his friend and counterpart, the famous warrior monk Benke, whom after Yoshitsune had bested in combat years prior, swore himself to follow and serve Yoshitsune, and would stand faithfully by his side until at last the two of them fought bitterly to the death after being betrayed in 1189. Through all of this, we can see that Yoshitsune was a brilliant commander and a greatly enduring leader, who inspired followers such as Benke to serve with him to the very end. For this, Yoshitsune easily receives a full 5 out of 5 for his leadership capabilities. If we were talking about Yoshitsune's popularity with later generations long after his death, then this category would be an easy 5 out of 5. He is one of the most celebrated figures in Japanese history, the subject of numerous works of literature and local legend, and even the namesake of a modern Japanese phrase, Hoganbiki, which means rooting for the underdog and is often described as one of the most commonly held sentiments of the Japanese people. During his life, however, Yoshitsune was not a universally loved figure, a fact you can probably guess just based on the fact that his own older brother, Yoritomo, ordered his death. Yoshitsune also famously feuded with Yoritomo's close advisor, Kajiwara Kagetoki, on multiple occasions, and it is said that Kagetoki's hatred of him was a large factor in Yoritomo deciding to turn against him. Interestingly, these feuds were often the result of Kagetoki making very reasonable strategy suggestions, like Yoshitsune not leading his army from the front lines, and Yoshitsune's actively hostile refusal of these suggestions paints a picture of a man who was perhaps not the easiest guy to get along with, if you believe the anecdotes. Still, Yoshitsune had been a successful enough commander for Yoritomo to fear him as a potential threat and it is said that when Yoritomo first sent a small assassination force to attack him in Kyoto, he struggled somewhat to find a man willing to lead it, a fact which suggests that the rank and file samurai were not especially eager to attack their former general. Yoshitsune was also a favorite of the retired emperor Goshirakawa, and he had a strong friendship with the leader of the Oshu Fujiwara, Fujiwara no Hidehira, indicating that he was well regarded across political lines, although this ironically may have fanned the flames of Yoritomo's suspicion toward him. That being said, when Yoshitsune attempted to raise a military force to take on Yoritomo, he failed to assemble many sympathizers, so at the end of the day it seems that his popularity among the average samurai was not enough to overcome their loyalty to, or perhaps fear of, the lord of Kamakura. It is said that Yoshitsune's great popularity as a folk hero began more than 150 years after his death, during the early Muromachi period, when negative memories of the fallen Kamakura Bakufu were still fresh in people's minds and Yoshitsune had come to be seen as something of an anti-Kamakura symbol. Considering his legendary posthumous status and his relative popularity during his lifetime, but also taking into account the fact that his small handful of enemies ensured he met a violent premature death at the age of about 30, I think Yoshitsune deserves a good, but not perfect, popularity rating of 4 out of 5. It is interesting to ponder the foresight Minamoto no Yoshitsune may have possessed. Certainly, in terms of his prowess as a commander, he must have had a confident level of interpreting and predicting the plans of his enemies, lest he never would have been successful. But ultimately, it is hard to say that he ever did have the foresight in the end to predict his own demise. To truly answer that, we have to look deeper into the relationship he had with his brother, the future shogun, Minamoto no Yoritomo. It is obvious that, for the majority of their time together, there was a level of solid trust between them, as Yoritomo had continually given Yoshitsune the capability to lead the armies of the Minamoto against the Taira, to which Yoshitsune delivered to him victories. And then of course, later, when their relationship began to sour, and rumors of treachery began filling the mind of Yoritomo, 
did Yoshitsune attempt to patch things over and prove his loyalty, all to no avail. To say that he saw this all coming would seem to be false, as if he did, he surely never would have done so much in the name of Yoritomo, unless his true loyalty was just to the family name itself, and not to the man who represented it in the highest form. For this, I feel it fit to award him the middle ground of 3 out of 5 in terms of his foresight. It is not that he did not possess cunning and keen intellect to know how the nature of things were progressing, but that it does appear to be clear that he never would have dreamed he would have found himself in the position that he did at the end of his life, accused of treachery by his own brother who he had just won a war for. Perhaps one of the greatest reasons that the legend of Minamoto no Yoshitsune continues to resonate with people even today is that he was a man who achieved great things despite luck never really being on his side. He was doomed by the circumstances of his family and his birth, and yet he approached his life with an earnestness that is charming even a millennium later. His father was officially a traitor to the imperial court, and he was born so close to the failed coup d'etat which left his father disgraced and dead that, unlike his older brother Yoritomo, he never even had the chance to be raised by the man and learn what it meant to be a member of the noble Minamoto clan. On top of this, Yoshitsune's status as the baby of the family, born to one of their father's paramours rather than his legal wife, meant that he would always be socially inferior to Yoritomo, who saw him as little more than a glorified tool for carrying out his own agenda. When Yoshitsune became too successful for his own good, a battlefield prodigy with the backing of the retired emperor, Yoritomo judged that he had gone beyond the limit of his usefulness and moved to have him eliminated. It's worth noting that Yoshitsune's brother and fellow Minamoto general, Noriyori, would also eventually be rubbed out by Yoritomo, despite being generally less talented and more obedient than Yoshitsune. So in retrospect, it seems that just being Yoritomo's male sibling was basically a death sentence. Perhaps the only real stroke of good luck that Yoshitsune experienced in his life was to not be killed as a baby by Taira no Kiyomori, who easily could have had him executed as the potential threat to the Taira that he eventually turned out to be. There was also surely some amount of luck involved in the daring strategic choices that he made in battle, but I'm still inclined to see his successes here primarily as the result of his own boldness and originality. Yoshitsune was a talented man born into a good family in one of the worst possible ways. And so, just like his cousin Yoshinaka, I believe he deserves a luck rating of 2 out of 5. And with that, we have covered all of our evaluation categories for Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Here's how he ended up looking overall. Now, let's move on to our final great figure of the Genpei War. Minamoto no Yoritomo. What is there to be said about the figure who would win the Genpei War and go on to establish the first of Japan's great shogunates, military governments that would dominate the country for roughly seven centuries? The one thing to remember, of course, is that while it is obvious Minamoto no Yoritomo carried with him a great ambition, there were certain roadblocks that were always in his way that could have hindered any of his progress. Thankfully, in the end, they did not. Things such as the Genpei War even happening at all, and then of course having Hojo Tokimasa join him rather than confine him, then later having the ability to grow his power base and compete with other rival lords, specifically like that of his cousin Yoshinaka. The path for Yoritomo's rise was made easier by those who chose to support him, and for that reason, his ambition was able to thrive. So much so that by the end of the war, he held all the power in the land, and could realistically choose to reforge the nation in whatever fashion he dreamed of. As we know, this would lead to the birth of the Kamakura Bakufu, where Yoritomo would become the new shogun, ruling the nation under an iron military grip. From this, we can see that from the time of his humble origins as an exile in Izu, he held a drive within him that would one day lead to his rise to the very summit of all power in Japan. Yet, once he had reached that point, it is also important to remember the ways in which he sought to protect his ultimate power, taking lengths such as to order the death of his own brother and the man who had largely aided him in winning the war, Minamoto no Yoshitsune, whom he feared would covet power for himself and had the popularity and status to truly be a threat. 
In the end, Yoritomo had trudged through the blood and chaos of war to emerge as a glorious reformer and leader of the nation and would remain upon his seat of power until his death in 1199. All in all, it is only natural that Yoritomo receives a full 5 out of 5 for his ambition. Minamoto no Yoritomo was the consummate politician, easily blowing past most of the people on this list and even edging out the great Taira no Kiyomori. Yoritomo consistently demonstrated a chess master-like ability to stay one step ahead of his political foes and a cold aloofness that allowed him to treat most of the people around him more as tools than as human beings. Despite this stony-hearted demeanor, he was also well aware of what the rank-and-file samurai of Eastern Japan wanted most, land security, and he leveraged this to build a base of support far more loyal and stalwart than what you might expect from a man who ordered the deaths of his own brothers. He was also a master of manipulating public opinion, leveraging the mistakes of his competitors, specifically the Taira and Minamoto no Yoshinaka, to make himself look good in comparison, such that the imperial court went from seeing him as a traitor to seeing him as a savior. From his choice to make his base in Kamakura, far from the influence of the Kyoto elite, to the various powers and privileges that he maneuvered his way into receiving from the retired emperor, Yoritomo was a master of political strategy, and for this reason I feel he strongly deserves a 5 out of 5 for political ability. Despite scoring so many accolades as head of the Minamoto family and as the victor of the Genpei War, we can't necessarily say that Yoritomo was the perfect leader. Many of his successes were afforded to him by others who helped ferry him to glory. Obviously his actual conduct as the head of the Minamoto family did play a role, so we can't say that it was all up to others. Figures like Hojo Tokimasa, who aided him in establishing his power base in Kanto, and of course Minamoto no Yoshitsune, who would win many of his most important battles. Without them, Yoritomo would have had a much more difficult path, and his skills as a leader would have been surely more put to the test. We can even say that at a glance, that Minamoto no Yoshinaka played some role in aiding the cause of Yoritomo, in that of his great victory at Kurikara, which can be seen as one of the major turning points of the war, and would later allow the Minamoto to sweep the Taira from Kyoto. But on top of that, it was largely through how Yoritomo conducted himself with Yoshinaka that also would cause Yoshinaka's betrayal. It is true that Yoshinaka's own ambition was tremendous as well, but the way in which Yoritomo handled the whole situation could have certainly gone smoother. Regardless though, Yoshinaka served a purpose, and one that Yoritomo had not foreseen nor planned himself, and would aid in paving the way towards Yoritomo's later victory in the war won through battles led by Yoshitsune. Once the war was done, he had gained enough power and influence to become the ultimate authority in the land and become the new Shogun. This is by far his largest crowning achievement and a testament to the power he commanded over all of Japan. His later faulty spat with Yoshitsune through his paranoia over those who may seek to steal power away, however, is a black mark on his otherwise stable and commendable role as a leader. Through this, we can judge that while Yoritomo was a genuine and competent leader, his path was only made clear by those around him. For this, I believe he should be awarded a solid 4 out of 5 in terms of his actual leadership skills. While it is important to note that the Kamakura Shogunate as an institution is to a certain degree an idea which historians developed in hindsight and that Yoritomo himself likely had no intention of establishing a quote-unquote warrior government, the fact of the matter is that he did build the foundations of a massively influential organization, something which he couldn't have done without the widespread support of the majority of the Kanto samurai. Yoritomo utilized the inherent prestige of his position as heir to the premier line of the Seiwa Minamoto clan and coupled it with a deep understanding of the motivations and desires of the warriors of Eastern Japan to assemble an extremely large and loyal constituency of supporters. The fact that even 20 years after his death, his widow Hojo Masako was able to rally that support base into taking up arms against the retired emperor himself in the Jokyu War just by invoking Yoritomo's name is clear evidence of what an enormous level of popularity he commanded. 
That popularity was not so much born of the dynamic charisma of, say, an Alexander the Great type, but rather the result of the sense of stability and security that he provided for the people under him, almost like some sort of wise and responsible father figure. In short, the warriors of Kanto felt extremely comfortable putting their destiny in his hands, which is I think a large part of the reason why something like the attempted uprising by little brother Yoshitsune failed in its infancy, even despite Yoshitsune's war hero status. Yoritomo has experienced an interesting drop in popularity today thanks to his reputation with modern history fans as a cold-blooded manipulator. But for this video, I've decided to base my score on how I think his actual supporters thought of him, and give him a popularity rating of 5 out of 5. In order to be in the position Yoritomo was in, and accomplish all that he did, there would need to have been some level of genuine foresight. It should go without saying that throughout all of his life, he definitely understood the position he was in, from his time in exile, to his role during the war, to later when he had become the new shogun. He knew he could win over and gain the trust of some specific figures, people like Tokimasa, and of course, Yoshitsune. And later, he knew he would be able to even manipulate Emperor Koshirakawa. But once again, I feel that a real defining moment for him is to examine his handling of the Minamoto no Yoshinaka situation, being that it really is a fine moment where nothing could have been anticipated and Yoshinaka proved to be a true wildcard. There is no real good way to know how Yoritomo could have handled the situation better, but the way that he did definitely did not appear to go as best as it could have especially after all the havoc Yoshinaka would go on to cause in the capital, which both worked out and a bit against Yoritomo's efforts, being that, yes, it made Yoritomo appear as the more suitable Minamoto leader, but also, the capital was temporarily left in a state of chaos. But beyond that, he also failed in his assessment that his brother Yoshitsune held treachery in his heart, which would later of course lead to his death. This all comes together to paint a picture of Yoritomo who continued to toe a line throughout his life. While on one hand, he was a competent leader and politician who was able to win the war and reforge the nation. On the other, he never fully had the ability to anticipate or predict the actions of others, especially at important moments. For this, a middle ground of 3 out of 5 seems only natural for his actual foresight. For all that we've praised Minamoto no Yoritomo's abilities as a politician and leader, you might expect that we'd give him a rather average or even low luck score as an example of a man who forged his own destiny on the merit of his own personal skills and talents. This, however, couldn't be further from the truth, as Yoritomo was in fact a case study in natural ability combining with excellent timing and circumstances to produce stellar results. First of all, Yoritomo was lucky to even survive to adulthood given that he was already 12 years old at the time of his father's failed coup d'etat in 1160. No one would have batted an eye had he been put to the sword, but thanks to Taira no Kiyomori's leniency, he was instead permitted to relocate to Kanto and live comfortably in exile. His father's death, ironically, made him the top guy in the Minamoto clan, and his move to Kanto allowed him to begin building a better understanding of the country warriors who would eventually make up his main supporter base. Despite this, he seems to have been rather content with the idea of quietly living out the rest of his life in the eastern backcountry, whiling away his days knocking up the daughters of various powerful local samurai. But yet again, destiny came calling with Prince Mochisto's decree for the destruction of the Taira in 1180. Even after raising troops and beginning his uprising, Yoritomo came dangerously close to losing his life at the Battle of Mount Ishibashi, where he was badly defeated by Taira sympathizers and is said to have literally hidden in a mountain cave to evade capture. Thankfully, he did manage to escape and put this early failure behind him, but his campaign had nearly ended right out of the starting gate. From this point on, the instances of abject good fortune grow somewhat less pronounced and Yoritomo's skills as a leader begin to become more apparent, but even still, the dice continue to roll in his favor throughout the remainder of the Genpei War. For having a life trajectory that literally makes it seem as though he were ordained by destiny to become one of history's great figures, I've chosen to give Yoritomo a luck rating of 5 out of 5. 
With all that said, this is how our final evaluation of Minamoto no Yoritomo ended up looking. Now that we have reached the end of our assessment of the Genpei War's three most prominent Minamoto actors, let's take a minute to review our conclusions and compare them side by side. We judged Minamoto no Yoshinaka to be outstanding in his ambition, with decent leadership and popularity, but below average political ability, foresight, and luck. A combination which helped him build a lot of early momentum, but ultimately resulted in him running face first into a proverbial brick wall. When it came to the legendary hero Yoshitsune, we found him decent but not overly impressive in the fields of ambition, political ability, and foresight, but strong in popularity and outstanding in his leadership. The only field for which we assigned him a weak rating was his luck, as despite his otherwise well-rounded skill set, the forces of destiny still conspired to assure him a tragic and premature demise. Finally, for the Genpei War's greatest beneficiary, Minamoto no Yoritomo, we gave him outstanding scores for his ambition, political ability, popularity, and luck, a strong score for his leadership, and a decent, if not overly impressive, rating for his powers of foresight. We didn't find any of Yoritomo's skills to be below average or poor, which seems fitting for the man who went on to found Japan's first shogunal government and establish the precedent of the samurai governing themselves. As mentioned in the intro, these Minamoto leaders are only three of the six Genpei War figures we looked at for this collaboration, so if you haven't already, be sure to head over to the Shogunate's channel after this to check out our takes on the Taira leaders and the retired emperor. I would like to give a big thank you to the Shogunate for doing these videos with me, as it has not only been a lot of fun, but it has also been a privilege to get to work with such a successful channel. I hope that there will be more opportunities to collaborate with him and other members of the YouTube history community in the future. As always everyone, thanks a lot for watching, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.